Welcome back to the Hawkeye Garage. I am Joe. This week's episode, I'm extremely excited to bring you guys. We are adding additional cup holders to the center console in my GX470. I think a lot of you guys are going to be excited to hear about it too, so stay tuned. Alright, I know in my video where the things that I hate about my GX was there's not enough cup holders. And when you're doing road trips and you have a family of four, you need lots of cup holders because they work for cups, they work for storage, they work for trash. You just need them. Um, so I have been putting some teaser photos out there on all my social media platforms and if you're on the GX Off-Road Facebook, I've been doing that uh, where we've been working on a few different versions of adding cup holders to the center console uh, of the 470. So we're to the point now where I can show you guys what I've been doing, how I've been going about it, and kind of what I'm thinking the next steps uh, are going to be for finalization, how maybe I'm going to be able to make it available to you all, and um, of course for your input. So as you can see, I've already pulled the center console top out of the 470. There's lots of videos out there and write-ups on how to do that. Go check that out. It is very simple. Um, and as you can see, I've already removed the uh, transfer case shift boot for uh, video purposes and we have the cup holder inserts in there right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get those popped out and I'm going to take this uh, top plate off so I can show you a little bit closer how I've gotten to this point. So here is what's left of the trim ring on the top of the center console. Obviously, uh, your air suspension switch would be been here and there's a, uh, Depending on which version or how the spec was of your 470, there'll be another switch here um, for transfer case lock or auxiliary input, whatever. Um, I've moved all that stuff and I'll show you that once we hop inside, but um, this is where we're at now. Because I didn't really know where the, set, the cup holders were gonna end up uh, in this, this real estate here, I have originally, I just went ahead and cut all of that material out. There's like, uh, the fake wood grain and then a real thin layer of aluminum and then plastic. It's kind of a, a mess, but um, since I didn't know where I was going to end up putting the cup holders, I just went in there um, with my cutoff wheel, cut it all out, and then I went ahead and used some plastic weld, uh, some JB, JB Weld plastic weld, I think is what it's called, two-part uh, adhesive, um, and I cut a piece of ABS plastic and put it in there. Glued it all up really good, and then I used um, a couple different body fillers to smooth it all out. It's not perfect, um, but like I said, we're still still testing all this. And then I Plasti Dipped it. Uh, Plasti Dip has a nice finish. Uh, it's kind of a matte finish. It takes um, interior products really well, fills in imperfections, and um, it's a smoother finish than like what Bedliner would be. So that's where I'm at uh, there. I don't know. I don't think cutting that whole area out will be necessary in the final version, but something I'm still working on. I basically just drew circles as big as I could on here. Wife and I are creatures of habit. When we go on road trips, I've said this before, we always have a cup of coffee and we always have a water bottle. So um, two out of the four fit fine in the regular cup holders there. Um, but the water bottles that we use were kind of uh, lacking uh, in security, if you will. So I modeled the cup holders after our water bottles. That's what I did. Uh, this is an Arctic water bottle. It's like 20 ounce, I think is what it is. 18, 20, 22. It's a skinnier one. The Ozark Trail water bottles and the Yeti water bottles are the same diameter and that's what I was aiming for. So we have that and uh, other things fit in here too. More common um, drink holders. I will show you guys that too once we get in because admittedly this is not a perfect solution. So these cup holders are 3D printed, like I said, to my specifications to fit the drink holders that we wanted and to take up as much real estate as we could while still being uh, secure and strong. Uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can tell. 3D printing, is, I'm coming to find out, is not kind of a just press a button and go. There's a lot of different factors. Uh, material, temperature, thickness of the material, the size of the nozzle, 
the way that the material is stacked on each other. So that's um, why we've kind of been doing several um, different versions to get them as strong as we can uh, while still fitting in there and making sure it all adheres together properly. So we'll probably still one or two versions out till the final spec of these cup holders. And um, yes, the version that I have right now um, is really, really good. Um, the guy who printed them for me has been doing a great job. Um, and we're still just kind of working the bugs out is all, all we're doing. I will probably go ahead and um, hot glue these in just to keep them secure for the time being because obviously I wasn't able to cut perfect circles so that they friction hold themselves in. Um, that's where I'm at with that. And to, if you guys are gonna do it the way that I did it, all I did to cut the holes was a little side rotary cutting bit for my Dremel so you can plunge and then cut in a circle. And then I used um, the drum sanding disc uh, with my Dremel and then I got a bigger drum sander uh, and put it in my drill press to just kind of um, walk them out to the size that I needed. I mentioned earlier that this is not like a one-size-fits-all final solution plug-and-play. There is some things that you're gonna have to deal with. Um, the air suspension and other suspension switches, you're gonna have to do something with those. I've just got mine tucked up underneath in the center console for right now. Eventually I'll be getting away with all of that because the air suspension will be gone. The adjustable shocks are already gone, so I don't have to worry about that. There is wiring harness that runs underneath this uh, for like the indicator lights for the shift bezel and a couple other things. You're going to have to unsnap those from the, this top plate and kind of shove everything down in there to make room for those cup holders. If if you're competent enough to attempt this to begin with, you're competent enough to move the wiring around and it's not gonna be a big issue. How am I gonna bring this to you guys? Uh, my goal is once we have the cup holder spec and printing process um, really finalized, that'll be half of it and the other half is I'm going to attempt to, um, I have a Cricut um, vinyl cutting machine, to make a template where basically you would take the template, stick it onto your center console, cut the holes out, however you seem fit uh, to do that, and then you will have cup holders. Um, obviously, uh, the amount of neatness that you can cut the circles with, however you want to paint it and finish it, like I said, it's all going to be up to you. I'm going to get you guys the template and the cup holders. The application will be up to you. Also, another thing that I thought would be really awesome, once this is done, if somebody out there in the internet land wants to get a hold of me that is much more savvy with 3D printing, computer stuff, CAD, uh, 3D laser mapping stuff, it would be awesome just to make this entire bezel with the cup holders just one piece. But there's lots of reinforcement and screw holes and clips and stuff for the shift boot and things back here, and it's not perfectly flat. It's kind of curved in all 360 degrees, so you can't even just cut a plate and slap it in there. Um, but a lot of you guys are uh, pretty talented out there. I think there will be a demand for it if somebody wants to put in the time and effort to make it happen. Uh, as you can see, I've gone ahead and removed the shift knob and thrown it up into four low to give you guys a, just a better view. Here is my Arctic 20 ounce whatever water bottle. As you can kind of see, it hits the shift knob when it's in park, not a big deal. Um, I can put it back here, and as long as I rotate the handle around and have the, the straw portion closed, it fits in there as well. Um, so I'm completely happy with that. Um, no, it is not 100% perfect, but it is what it is. Uh, I've got some other um, pretty common stuff here. This is a, a Yeti, uh, the smaller, Tumbler, 16 ounce, 18 ounce, I think. These do not go all the way down. It gets a little bit too fat, so it goes about inch and a half in there, but it is uh, in there and it's secure, so there's that. Here is the also the smaller, um, this is the Ozark Trail. Goes in there perfectly fine, does awesome. What else we got? This is another Arctic, um, smaller, 
tumbler, this tapered 16 ounce, I think, goes in there just fine. And of course, regular, this is kind of your traditional size to go coffee cup. Obviously that fits in there. And we have, these. Are, this is the big, um, this one happens to be a Yeti, but I'm pretty sure the Arctic and the Ozark Trail ones are all exactly the same spec or super close. It, um, we have the same issue with the shifter and park, um, but whatever, and it does hit on the ashtray a little bit. Personally, I'm not real worried about uh, this because we don't really use this size of tumbler. This is just a random one that we had, but you could put it in the cup holder um, back uh, behind the shifter and you would be fine. Well, thank you so much for watching. I know I threw down a lot of information at you guys and did a lot of talking. I just trying to answer as many questions as I assumed would be coming up uh, in the comments and on Facebook and stuff when I post this video. Um, I do not have the 3D printing file to send anyone. Don't ask. Um, like, I literally don't have it. I've asked, I haven't asked to have it because I don't want to have to deal with that um, and I have no idea if that's something that we're going to think about offering in the future whether for free or for payment. I didn't make the file so that's not my call. Uh, anyway, if you have any comments or questions, suggestions, please leave them uh, down below. If you have any real detailed information or questions, be sure to email me, hawkeyeskunkworks at gmail.com. Follow the links down below over to Instagram and Facebook where I'll be posting more of this updates as we go along and where I post a lot more content than just the GX470. Speaking of content, uh, be sure to check out my mountain bike videos that I've been posting on Wednesday nights, trying to keep that up uh, as much as possible and check out my back catalog uh, for the GX build and the Forerunner before it and all the other stuff that I've had going on. Uh, in the past. Hit the notifications to be notified uh, on Sundays and Wednesdays when I drop those videos. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I would really, really appreciate that. So uh, until next week or next Wednesday, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.